everyone, I'm Nikki Hart and welcome to Design Like a Pro. I have a user generated question here from Bruce who emailed me asking specifically how to handle spines when he's creating a magazine with a perfect bound spine. Now perfect bound spine is something like this. You have a lot of pages here and it's glued, it's not stapled. So that's the big difference with perfect bound spines. You find them a lot with really large magazines on the newsstands today. You also find that with any sort of novel or book that you might pick up in a bookstore. So the question that he had was specific to when he's laying out his document in InDesign, how he accommodates for the spine in his pages. Because if you've looked at my courses here and my tutorials here on Design Like a Pro, you'll notice that I don't really accommodate for a spine when I'm building my pages in InDesign. And a lot of times I'm having the outside and inside cover right in the document with the rest of my pages. If you want though, you would, if you were going to have some text on the spine, you would create your outer cover on a different document and then you'd have the spine information there as well. But what happens when you're making those inside pages and spreads and you want to bring an image all the way across that spine? Do you need to accommodate for extra space? Do you need to duplicate something? How exactly would you set up your document? Well, you'll be happy to know that you really don't have to take extra steps when it comes to building a perfect bound spine into your document. And if you pick up a magazine and really look at how much you're losing by having those pages fold in, you're not losing a lot of content overall. So the most important thing to remember is not to keep really important content in that area. So let's go ahead and open up InDesign and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so we are here in InDesign. I am in InDesign CC. This technique that I'm going to talk to you about regarding magazine spines can be created in any version of InDesign, so don't let the new version scare you. So what happens when you're working with spines? When you're creating a new document in InDesign, all of this can be set up for you. So we have our print document here. We're going to create, let's create three pages so that you can get a spread. We're going to have facing pages checked. We're going to just create a standard A4 here. Make sure it's portrait. Throw in a few columns to get started. Now here we are with the gutter. I'm going to go ahead and set preview and take advantage of this new feature here in InDesign. And let's go ahead and add in our standard bleed. Okay. So the question that I received was specific to the gutter. So what happens is you may be tempted to add to this gutter depending on what you think. But here's the thing, when you're, when you're talking about the gutter, look what happens. When we click the gutter, it's actually referring to our columns here. So if we took this down to one column, you can see that nothing happens when we change the gutter, right? So it, it works with columns by giving us spaces between our columns here. So that's really where the gutter comes into play. So that's not the right approach when we're thinking about the spine here. What you really need to pay attention to when you are trying to accommodate a spine is going to be your margin. Now you can obviously set your margin here if you want to, but notice that this is setting it all together. That's fine. And really, when it comes to the spine, I encourage you guys to look at real magazines. Look at those perfect bound magazines and look at thick ones, 200 pages or more, and take a look at where that spine really starts impacting the content. And you'll notice that there really isn't accommodation for that beyond just our standard margin because you keep your content away from the edge. And so what happens is you can't really set your margin on the right or the left or the inside top and bottom because it's going to change from the left and the right side of your spread. So you can add an extra margin here if you want to just to be safe and then notice that you're really going to pay attention on either the right or the left side of your document. So if we hit OK here and create this, you really see this effect on a spread page, not so much your cover page. Because imagine this right here as your, as your binding. So this right here is what's actually going to fold. So you can imagine that where this margin line is and where this margin line is, when it's folded, that's where you definitely don't want content to, to reside at all. You really don't want content to be there because it's going to be cut off by the spine, especially if you have a pretty thick magazine. 
So it's going to fold at least up to this margin line. So we've accommodated for that. But the other area of this question was what happens when you have a double page spread and you have an image that goes across both sides. What happens then? So let's go ahead and drop in an image real quick. I'm just going to drop this image in here. Okay, so what happens if you want this to go across both pages? Probably not that much, but something along the lines like that. Okay, and then you have text all the way around. Well, the question is with the spine, are you going to cut away this image? And the answer is whenever you have something that goes across a spread, you are going to lose some detail due to the fact that that is folding. And however many pages you have and the thickness that you have is going to increase that. So with that in mind, you want to be aware of what image you're using. Because the question was that Bruce asked me was, well, would you actually, instead of laying the image, would you piece it together? Really, you can lay your image across like this. But what you really need to pay attention to is where your image resides in between this margin and this margin. Because this area right here is what you can't guarantee is going to be extremely visible. Now the other thing, when your printer puts these pages together, it is going to cut it in half. So if I were to visually depict this for you, it's going to look like that on one side, okay? and it's going to look like this on the other. So your image is technically cut in half when the printer goes to plate this. So there is no perfect method to line this up exactly. I've had magazines come back and one issue looks really good. The next one, and by issue, I mean like physical magazines out of your print run. One may look great. The other one is slightly off. So it's not a perfect match whenever you have something where the image spreads across. So the only way that you can make sure that what you have is all right is just really pay attention to what is between your two margin lines when it comes to the spine. So you don't want anything super important in there. This may make it so that you need to readjust how you place this image. For example, now this information isn't as vital if we were to lose that. So it's all about how you want to use this image, how you're going to place it, what you're willing to give up in the process of this folding, because you don't want anything super important. Prime example, somebody's face. You don't want somebody's face to line up right in the middle here. If you have somebody's face, move it over slightly. Okay, so if we bring an image in here with somebody's face, this works better if you have room to move around than if you had something very closed in. If you had something like that, that doesn't give you a lot of room to play with. But if you have something more horizontal where you have room to move this around, that's much better. So for example, you do not want to place her right there where this is going to get cut off right down her line or right down her nose because that is going to fold right in half on her face. So move her face off so that it resides outside of your margin. Okay, this area being folded is fine. You'll still be able to say, see her face when the magazine is folded, but it's not going to be cut off if it was right there, right on the center line, for example. And you can move it the other way. Cutting her hand off is okay. And by cutting off, I don't mean it's literally going to be cut off, but what it's going to do is it's going to fold on her hand. And that's not as vital as her face. We're still going to see her face. And you can still put text around this image as you want to in your final magazine layout. So that's a way to really look at your spine and figure out where you want to go when you place this. So in the end, the important thing to think about is the placement of your image. You can accommodate your spine if you know that it's going to be a little bit thicker than average, but really your standard half an inch margin will work just fine on both sides because that's adding an inch margin here and here, and that's more than enough to accommodate your spine. So the next thing you want to be aware of is where you're placing your image to make sure important elements aren't anywhere in this area. And you definitely want to make sure that text is never in this area. Everything important needs to stay within 
your margin guides. I want to thank you guys so much for watching this tip. Thanks to Bruce for bringing it to my attention and allowing me to share the answer with all of you. I hope that helps when you're working with your magazine productions and especially working with Perfect Bound Spines. Please leave me comments and questions below. I really do love hearing all of your feedback. If you have an idea for an upcoming episode or you have a burning design question in mind, go ahead and send those to me either in the comment below via a message here, or you can send those to ideas at nikkihart.com and you may see yourself in an upcoming episode just like Bruce did. Please subscribe so you can stay up to date with all of the latest and greatest here on Design Like a Pro and I will see all of you in the next episode. Bye.